welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells here at Tenova Fair 2013. My name is Alexa von Busse, I'm your host for the next session and I'd like to invite you to come here to sit down, to have a coffee on the house and to ask questions because we are a public forum and uh, you are allowed, I'm not the only one allowed to ask questions, so raise your hand, I come around with a microphone. Okay, so as we already lose time, uh, I'd like to start right away. Another big player of the research scene is now coming to stage. I'd like to welcome the head of fuel processing and systems of the Forschungszentrum Jülich to talk about us, uh, us about fuel cell systems for the utilization of biofuels. So please welcome Professor Ralf Peters with me. Hello, Professor Peters. Nice yeah. to have you here. Sit down. Yeah. Professor Peters, I announced you, um, you're from the Forschungszentrum Jülich and this is a really big institute. So maybe you give us a short overview of how it is structured and where are you located in there? Okay. Uh, we have about uh, five, nearly 5,000 uh, workers at the research center. Uh, we are divided into several research divisions. Um, one is uh, energy and environment. Um, that's the uh, part where I'm from. Uh, we have also uh, researchers in, um, in physics, in um, medicine, and um, in um, uh, biological uh, systems. Mm -hmm. And we want to talk about biofuels and uh, the utilization of them with fuel cells. So what kind of biofuels are we talking about here? Uh, we are talking about uh, biofuels uh, for, for those systems we uh, have in mind for our applications. Uh, these are biomethanol and uh, biodiesel and biokerosene. Okay, these three. Why these, not no other ones? Um, we see as an application for our fuel cells onboard power supply for airplanes, uh, trucks and ships, mm -hmm. and also um, for smaller systems uh, in the industry. And for those both applications, or for the application in the APU sector, uh, we see mostly diesel and kerosene. Um, that's in principle something in the refinery which is called middle estalates. Okay, and so you're searching for something comparable or uh, chemically uh, similar? We are looking for something which is similar uh, to those fuels and in, in this case uh, we are talking about uh, fischer tropsch diesel or fischer tropsch kerosene and we are talking about um, uh, plant oils which were hydro-treated with, um, with hydrogen. We are not talking about um, uh, fame, which is that what we see today in the infrastructure um, in the in the, in the, in the, full, in the, in the tank. Yeah. Okay, we're coming very much into yeah. chemical detail here. Let's uh, keep it simple first. Um, I thought fuel cells are running on hydrogen. Uh, how do uh, can they be run uh, with biofuels? How can we get that out of it? Hydrogen is the ideal fuel for such a fuel cell. Mm -hmm. um, and also methanol can be used directly in a uh, special fuel cell. This is this direct methanol fuel cell, where we have electrochemical conversion inside of the fuel cell. But uh, by the way, uh, instead of hydrogen, we can also use hydrogen-rich gases. And these hydrogen-rich gases must be produced then from liquid fuels. Okay, so we need other components before the biofuel goes into the fuel cell, right? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, the public is not very familiar with that, so let's just have a quick look uh, on these components. What do we need and how does this work? Uh, what we need is a process where we uh, take this liquid energy carrier and um, make a chemical reaction uh, and produce it in hydrogen. This is called reforming. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are special processes and the one we use um, that's called autothermal reforming. We use here air and steam together with the fuel, and then we convert this into a hydrogen-rich gas. Afterwards, we have a gas treatment, and then after this gas treatment, we have the perfect fuel for the fuel cell then. So it's basically biofuel, a reforming process, a mixed gas, um, another process, and then hydrogen, and then that goes into the That's fuel That's correct. Cell. Okay. Um, where does the, the biofuel come from? Where do you get that from? Um, the biofuel can, can be produced by several ways. Um, you can use um, uh, wood mm -hmm. or straw or something else and can make a gasification. And with this gasification, uh, you get an, a gas. 
again. And then there are several processes like fischer tropsch processes who make out of this, um, then after yeah, several steps, again, a liquid. Okay. Um, do, do you get enough of it? Because as far as I know, there are not many uh, companies who are producing it right now. Uh, this is still uh, in, in progress. Uh, there were some companies producing um, smaller amounts, uh, then the uh, players uh, changes again. So this is something which has to be grown in the future. So uh, in, in, in a certain scenario, uh, we have to um, have a split between uh, fossil energy carriers and then between biofuels. So that we have a growing biofuel sector at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you mentioned the vegetable oils before uh, too, as um, as a, a component of the biofuel mm -hmm. or where you get it from. But um, to win this vegetable oil, there are some critical ways, or either they are uh, competing with other industries. So, um, w w yeah, what can you do about that? Uh, in our agenda, we would like to use uh, second-generation uh, fuels. Mm -hmm. uh, Second-generation means um, that we have no um, competition to uh, food production. That's very important. Uh, but uh, in, the, uh, in this process, uh, we use also uh, uh, processes which can be used also for first-generation fuels. So we have a scenario to come to the second-generation fuels. But in principle, we would not like to have competition to food production. That's very important for us. Okay, so that doesn't leave a, a critical pr footprint there. Okay. Um, let's come back to the fuel cells. Uh, what kind of fuel cells are you researching on? Uh, what kind of fuel cells are you working with? Uh, we have the uh, solid oxide fuel cell as a high temperature fuel cell working at 800 centigrade. Uh, then we use... Um, um, the direct methanol fuel cell, as I mentioned before, but that's the special fuel cell using this methanol or the biomethanol. And then we have uh, low temperature fuel cells, uh, the PFC, which is also split it into two parts. We have this really low temperature at 80 centigrade, and we are now focusing on high temperature PFC, and they have an operation temperature between 160 and 180 centigrade. We use them in this way. PFC that's similar to PEM, which means a proton uh, yeah, exchange. It's an, yeah, it's another material. Mm -hmm. It's instead of the uh, nafion, we have this uh, PPE material. Mm -hmm. um, that's the difference. So the electrochemistry is something else, um, but it's classified uh, as a low temperature fuel cell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what kind of fuel cells are good for what kind of applications? Or uh, maybe let's split it. What are the differences between uh, the types and what are the advantages uh, of that? Let's point that out first and then come to the applications. So differences. Um, the uh, high temperature uh, PEM have the uh, advantage uh, that it can tolerate more carbon monoxide uh, related to the low temperature fuel cells at 80 centigrade. And um, this enables us to make the uh, fuel uh, generation process the fuel processing a little bit easier as in the case for PFC. Why well, is it easier? Uh, we uh, have one step less. So uh, for the PEM we need also a process which is called CO fine cleaning mm -hmm. um, and this we can omit this process for the high temperature PEM. Mm -hmm. And the SOFC as you already pointed out is uh, it's working? It's a high temperature, it's Very also yeah. used for, for auxiliary power units but um, the main work is uh, done, uh, done in the institute uh, with the HDPFC. Okay, so let's come to the applications. What's good for what? <laughs> uh, the high temperature PEM, uh, we use that for uh, aircraft application and for truck application. We have the several projects where we use it uh, for kerosene reforming, uh, for system in, um, um, evaluation. So we build up um, a system uh, for five kilowatt high-temperature high PEM stacks together with a uh, reforming process. Can you give us um, an, an image of uh, the use of it? So can, can I imagine uh, an aircraft running or taxiing down uh, a taxiway or what kind of, um, uh, yeah, what's, what's the application look like in the real world? Um, in, in, in the real world, um, afterwards, uh, the fuel cells uh, as uh, power units working um, for mostly for idling in idling processes uh, and then uh, for truck for example we have only an efficiency of about 11 percent if you have the truck in idling and that is not acceptable at the end 
uh, for the aircraft, you have uh, at the airport an APU inside of the aircraft, uh, but also this is a turbine in the rear of the um, airplane, and also this efficiency is limited to something between 15 and 20 percent. So there we have um, a, a good um, advantage if we are talking about efficiencies between 30 and the potential to 40 percent mm -hmm. for this fuel cell technology. Okay, and what are you using the SOFC for? Uh, we use the SOFC uh, for um, for small for 20 kilowatt solutions, 20 kilowatt solutions, or for for, um, for smaller solutions, stationary solutions. Also, uh, we have some project looking for the um, SOFC in, in in truck applications, but here we use directly our stacks or stack materials. Okay. Are there any questions uh, from the audience? Yes, there are. Hi, uh, I have a question regarding the uh, getting the liquid fuel for the fuel cell. You said biomass gasification and then fissure troughs synthesis, getting the liquid fuel, and then again reformation to get the hydrogen gas to use in the fuel cell. So there are many steps, and each of these steps you lose some energy because of the efficiency of these steps. How about like using the flue gas from the ga biogas gasification directly with the fuel cell, especially with an SOFC? This should be possible. Maybe it's not suitable for transport applications, but it could be suitable for uh, stationary applications, right? That, that's true. That's also something we are examining. Yeah, that's in our in our um, project business. Yeah, that we have this um, for the uh, truck application and also for this big transport application. We need a liquid energy carrier due to the long-term operation. That's the reason why we are looking on something which also. Um, uh, Gets, in, gets us in a situation that we have a liquid fuel in the future on a sustainable base. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? At the moment, you already mentioned it, uh, what you are looking for or what you're working on. Um, it, it was just one aspect. Uh, what uh, other objectives do you pursue? What are your goals with all this research? Um, what we want, want to show is that the fuel cell technology and also the uh, reforming technology, reforming technology um, can get into applications where we can s show uh, its potential. Yeah? And then we can um, uh, show that we have a chance uh, to change the energy sector to a more or less uh, sustainable um, world. That's what we are trying yeah. to, to do. And what, what do you think is um, the next step that we need uh, to, to get this done finally? Uh, what, what we have to do now is to sh show that the systems we have built up have a certain long-term stability, that we get to into systems where we can demonstrate uh, this technology, that people see that it works, um, that it has an impact for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how do you, um, well, maybe it's, yeah, how do you intend to do this? Or do, do you think, um, are you sometimes facing the problem that you can't address the public? That, that people don't understand what you are doing, and that's why they are not interested, or they are not um, yeah, taking the message? Um, what we are now uh, doing is we have, um, for example, a European project where we're working on uh, a target application, and I think uh, if this is successful, people can see that if they are technically interested. In principle, you, have, you are right, yeah? Therefore, we need these things. Uh, we also have some other um, projects in mind, uh, where we want to demonstrate this uh, technology where people can see that, yeah, or, um, yeah, at the end. Yeah, I think to, to uh, give a hands-on demonstration would be the, one of the right ways, yeah. Okay, so I think, yeah, we ran out of time largely, I'm sorry. So for further questions, please uh, follow Professor Peters to his booth right here at C68 uh, of the Forschungszentrum Jülich. And thank you very much, Professor Peters, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. And let me just do a quick announce of our next topic. It's wind for clean living. And what that has to do with fuel cells is explained by Ezio Tedoldi from the Italian company Creel. So stay tuned.